What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Scott. Welcome to the Scott Report. Today, I'm bringing you a manga review of The Promised Neverland, Chapter 48. Standard, but nonetheless outstanding chapter this week that we normally get from The Promised Neverland after a bomb is dropped on us with this chapter being a majority of it touching base with everybody else that wasn't in the room doing a big revelation you know outside of ray and emma what song Ju explained to them about the world and the state of the earth that they're in is now broken down to don and gilda and they basically are just trying to wrap their heads around everything like we were and that takes up a majority of the chapter but even though that was the meat of it it was still so good because the end of this chapter definitely starts to make me question William Minerva more and more and more. It's to the point now where, you know what, I straight up just don't believe this William Minerva guy because speaking of the demons, you know, the kids are still in pursuit with the demons right now on their tail, looking at the signs that Ray left and everything, but this tunnel that they're in or this maze to the other side that they need to cross was made by Sung Ju, and he was like, the demons can't find you here because I made this path myself. It's pretty much a maze, and um, only me and Musica know it, but it was funny because Musica was like, well, I would've got lost if I would've went. So it's good to see comedy with the demons as well. This is something that I asked for and something that I was hoping for. I should've known that we would've got it, but it just feels good to finally get it in front of us to see demons with personalities, with you know, humor with anger, attitude, just seeing some individuality out of these demons besides these big hawking things that just wants to eat humans. So it's good to see that. And I can't wait to see who the bad guys of this series is because when you're dealing with dealing with humans and dealing with creatures, it's always that element that humans always end up being worse than, you know, the creatures themselves. And I think we're going to run into that here with the Promised Neverland because something big that I think is on all of our minds right now is that even though, you know, everybody wants to get to this Promised Neverland, this side that is full of humans, what if the humans don't want them there? What if the kids crossing over to this land will cause a war? That's inevitable. It looks like that's where the series is going. So what's going to happen when we get to that? We don't know the state that these humans are in. There's so much out there that we don't know that by the time they get to this place, who knows where the story is going to end up. And that is so good because we are just on the demon side. We still don't know what's on this side of the earth. And we still have to find that out as well. I just think that when the kids get to this side, it's not going to be as optimistic or nice and pleasant as Emma thinks. And of course, they do a good job, even though she has a lot of shonen tropes of one to get through and finding her way through and get to the, to the job done no matter what. Emma's very lighthearted. She's very optimistic, but she's not stupid either. She knows this isn't going to be an easy road, which leads me to wonder. I mean, they're not going to be able to just walk across to this gate. I think Song Ju knows that as well, or he's just, or um, Song, yeah, Song Ju. I think he knows that as well. I think he's just going to take them to where they need to go and be like, okay, you're on your own. But there has to be some guards or something there that's protecting this way in because this promise was made for a reason so i would assume that either the demon side the human side or maybe even both have some type of way of making sure that nobody gets across and entice this war so i think that's going to be the next obstacle that we run into and when i say i don't trust william minerva anymore is something that um sung ju said to Musica and he name dropped this demon that we've heard. I believe this is the third time We just see the names in some type of text. We can't make out what the name is But he said you know what this is inevitable this Demon whatever his name is is has been the enemy all along. So that's really big I mean he kind of saying that it was gonna come to some point that this was going to happen um, You know even though they're like pacifists even though they decide to uphold the promise I think they kind of know that one day some humans are going to get over there and this war is going to start. Or maybe even William Minerva. This is something I brought up last week and I'm pretty sure you guys have thought of as well. Maybe it's William Minerva guys trying to start a war. Maybe it's William Minerva guy may even be a demon. Who knows? Because, I don't know, it just seems a little bit too convenient for him to have everything that they need to get across. And then we just got this bombshell dropped on us that... This promise was made for both sides to stay out of each other's way. So now you have these books and you have these kids going on a journey to try to cross over to Forbidden Land. Yeah, nothing good is going to come out of this. 
So the fact that we hear something that such and such or whatever this thing is, or however you supposed to say it, is always their enemy, I don't know. To me, it just kind of feels like it's William Minerva setting everything up. It would be a great twist, and this series is anything but predictable, but I kind of see it going that way. So I definitely want to know what you guys think about that. Um, Another good thing about this chapter, something that I really liked, is Don and Gilda. Don and Gilda as characters, I am so attached to them now that I don't want to see anything happen. It will crush me if one of them is still a mole, if that possibility is still out there. It will really crush me if we lose them now because they have done a very good job of holding their weight and becoming characters on their own. Like, there's a particular scene in this chapter where Gilda is scolding Emma saying, don't hurt yourself again. We're all in this together. You can't just go out and do things on your own you have to think of the rest of us now and you know you have don pretty much putting everything together at a slower pace than ray did like okay maybe we need we do need to get to this other side but maybe we need to take a little bit more caution and i'm liking the mother hen role that gilda has in this story now and i like the big brother role that don has because the other kids are looking up to him in ray's absence because we know ray is a lord we know that but he would do things on his own and we see at the point of life that he's at now he would rather sacrifice himself than to get everybody else in danger so to see don gilda and all the kids form around ray and emma and say look we are in this together. We got you. If it's anything you need from us, just ask. Don't go out on your own. Stop trying to kamikaze and give yourself up. We're going to cross this path and we're going to do it together. So that was a really warm, nice moment. Even to see Jemima hug Ray. I mean, man, that was a really sweet thing. That was a sweet point of the chapter. But yeah, it was business as usual again for Promise Neverland. And they do this quite often again just like i said at the top of the video when you get a chapter where something really big is revealed they usually take the time to slow down and expand on it a little bit more or either show the point of view or how the people that didn't know about it are feeling and that's exactly what we got in this chapter but it doesn't mean it wasn't good it was just one of those chapters where they just decided to expand upon what happened last chapter but that last panel definitely got me excited for what's up next i mean I really do feel that um, Musica and Sungju are here to help these kids, but they don't want to get involved in this war. And I think once they cross this wall, what is going to happen is they're going to have to. I mean, that guy got that stick for a reason. So they're probably going to have to fight to make sure these kids get across. They may lose their lives. I hope not because I really like these characters. I really want both of them to go with the kids. I really do because even though it's only been about two or three chapters, I kind of have an attachment to Sungju and Musica now. So it'll be nice if they decide to keep going see what's beyond even though it is gonna start a fucking war so definitely let me know what you guys think do you still think that william minerva is a good guy do you think william minerva is actually the catalyst that's starting this war is he a demon is he a human we haven't heard from norman and i don't know how long now so at this point we probably won't see him for a while but do you still think that what maybe william minerva is back like at the plantation side of things and um norman's still working with him do you think that's a possibility moreover let me know what you guys think is going to happen once we get to this wall and i'll catch up with you guys soon so as always if you like this video go ahead and drop a like and if you want to hear more go ahead and hit that subscribe button if there's not a shortage of content for you indulge on this channel and as i always say you guys be anywhere on youtube right now but you chose to listen to me and i really appreciate that so thanks for stopping by on that note it's your boy scott signing out see you soon